My name's Tony Wilson and what I'm doing is I'm giving you a, a few ideas as to things that you can do when you go on a visit to a, a gallery. I think that as we get older we all think that uh, we get more self-conscious about trying to express an opinion about a painting and we do feel as if we have to express um, some knowledge about that painting before we look at it. But what I want you to know is that I believe that whatever your reaction is to a painting that is the right one because that is the one that matters the most to you. And you don't necessarily have to have a huge knowledge or a background within art to know what it is that you like. Now, everyone's opinion is as good as anyone else's. I think the only thing that really changes is the fact that some people can express that opinion in a more academic way. Well, I'm going to show you three main activities that you can use within a gallery. Uh, things that you can do when you're actually there to make the most of your time when you're in the gallery and to give the children something to do rather than just walk around and look at the pictures and then perhaps not take anything in. You've got to remember that children often have a different, uh, a quite a literally different um, aspect or perspective on paintings because quite often you'll think that paintings are hung up on the wall for adults to look at and yet children are much shorter than a grown-up and they're looking upwards towards a painting. And sometimes, I've got to tell you, I've walked around with a video camera and taken photographs of the, the gallery from a child's eye view and quite often there's a reflection from the lighting within the gallery. So it's something to take into account. But uh, there's, there's one thing that I really love about going to a gallery with very young children is that they tend to take things incredibly literally. They're not looking at the painting and going, oh, this looks as if it's from a long time ago. They'll say, uh, just the first thing that they observe, there's a watering can in the middle of that picture. And you'll sort of go, well, yes, there is actually, and I've never actually looked at it myself. Because what we tend to do as grown-ups is, we look at the whole painting, and children will focus on a very small aspect of a painting. And that's not always a bad thing, because that's something that you can use to your advantage to get the children to observe something that they really like in the painting. Okay, so what you should do is, if you go to a gallery, and as I'm working a lot of the time in the Lang Art Gallery, I would say enjoy the gallery for the building that it actually is, because it was purpose-built, uh, and it was made so that the paintings look their best at any particular time of year because there, there's a great consideration of the lighting that goes on in that place and uh, I've got to say I'm biased I think that it's not overcrowded sometimes you'll go into a gallery and there are millions and millions of paintings up on the wall and it's very difficult to focus on one or two of them but that's that's a great thing and I want you to understand that galleries are incredibly child friendly these days in the way that libraries are. Um, when I was young, it was a case of you dare not breathe or speak or talk out of turn in a gallery or a library, but these days it's much more child friendly. If you think about the Lang Art Gallery in Newcastle upon Tyne, it has sections which are really play areas, and they get children, very young children, to enjoy a building and not really have to focus on the paintings, then that's a great thing. Well, as you can probably tell, I'm not actually using paintings, uh, well, real paintings, mostly because I can't afford them, or prints, and that's specifically because of copyright uh, issues. So I can see that, uh, you can see the way that I've drawn these, you're going to feel better about your own art anyway. What I've done is I've chosen three paintings. Uh, one is by Holman Hunt, it is uh, of Isabella in the Pot of Basil. Uh, another one is uh, a painting by um, Burne Jones, which is called Tannhauser. And the third painting that I've chosen is by John Martin, and it's called The Bard. Now, it, it's purely coincidental. I just put in a, 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 set, a search on the web and asked for three famous paintings at the Lang Art Gallery, and these are the three that came up. But quite often, it's a good idea to choose three different paintings from different genres or abstract paintings, but... What I'm going to do is show you that much of the time that you're in an art gallery, it's about observation and discussion and reporting. 
the reaction to a painting hopefully comes from the discussion that you engage in with the children. Now, one of the best pieces of advice that I was ever given uh, about art is to imagine that you were just about to step into a painting. And what you do then is you think about, by using your five senses, what you would do in that place. What you would smell, taste, touch, feel. Uh, and also what you would feel about being in that place. Especially if you had someone who looks quite uh, as abstracted as Isabella does in the Pot of Basil by Holman Hunt. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly sh show you three activities that you can do within an art gallery. So, what you can do is you can look at a painting from three distances. That is, rather than just come straight up towards the painting, you go to the furthest part away from a, a large painting, hopefully, and you take the children and you sit them down and you look at a painting from three distances. From the furthest distance away from it, slightly closer to that, and then you actually get the children to sit directly in front of the painting. So, with Isabella and the Pot of Basil, you get the children to stand up and sit down and stand up and sit down, so that your visit to the gallery isn't just a sedentary uh, activity where they're always sitting and listening to something. It's about you engaging in discussion, enjoying the way that they can hear their voices echoing inside of the hall. So what I did was, uh, I worked with some older children, this were some key stage two children, who did not know what the painting is about. And I want you to understand that this is what the whole of this DVD is about, that you don't have to understand or know the history of the painting. They looked at it from three distances, and at the first distance, the furthest away, they wrote, well actually they spoke, uh, and I wrote down and I would say that you ask them for three word sentences, not just single words. And they spoke and I wrote down, lightest pink glows through the dress, red roses, orange cloth embroidered silks, listening closely, hopes for a lover to return, frightened for a knock at the door, deeply sad, listening for his return. And then they stood up and they moved slightly closer. I would say probably about sort of ten large paces closer. And then, when they could see more detail in the picture, this is what they came up with. Marble watering can refreshes the plant. Bare feet. Roses scattered on tiled marble floor. Hair loose upon the basil pot. Intimate sadness. Well, some of them could have read the, 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 the small description at the side and they'd seen that it was called Isabella and the Basil Pot. And then we came so close to it that you could actually see the individual brush strokes. And they sat and they looked at it. And this is what they, they wrote, they said and I wrote down on a, uh, on a piece of paper. Hand to eyes, back bent, water spilt on a mirrored floor, reflected in the old oil lamp's light, she can see him once more. It's not talking about who Holman Hunt was or who this woman was. It was just their gut reaction to a painting. Well, I've got to say that that was something that they'd never experienced before. And as you'll see, as I'm just about to put it on to the, the DVD, you'll see that really it is a very good description and its use of adjectives and reactions and feelings and observation. Okay.